Hey guys, Ryan here, and in this video, I'm going to be covering how you can install and use Microsoft Teams, Edge, Skype, OneDrive, and Office on Linux using native applications. Of course, all these pieces of software can be accessed using a web browser, but if you want standalone applications as well, you do have that option, regardless of what Linux distribution you end up using. So first on the list is Microsoft Teams, which is available directly from Microsoft as a Deb or RPM installation package, and that covers your Ubuntu's, your Fedora's, and your OpenSUSE based distributions. Alternatively, you can install Microsoft Teams for it as a flat pack, but just a couple of things to bear in mind, all of these methods will install Microsoft Teams for work, which is designed to work with an active Microsoft 365 subscription and not personal accounts. In other words, if you want to use Teams with a personal account, then you need to install the Teams for Linux flat pack in the stead. But either way, once you've installed Teams, launch it as normal, sign into your account, and we'll check it out. So as you can see, the layout of Teams is the same as on Windows. You can create new conversations, you can set up some meetings, and you can also create new calendar entries as well. Plus, if you've got a webcam attached, then what you'll find is when you create a new meeting, it will detect that you've got the webcam attached, as well as any external microphones as well. If I'm perfectly honest, in terms of functionality, using Teams on Linux is the same as just using it on Windows. You're not really missing anything out. Although I do find it still kind of annoying that you've still got different versions of Teams to install. But uh, hey, I suppose that's the Microsoft way of doing things. So next on the list is Microsoft Edge, which is officially available from Microsoft. And once again, as a dev installation package, and that's designed for Ubuntu based distributions. However, if you don't, don't use Ubuntu or anything based on Ubuntu, you can also pick, also pick it up as a flat pack as well. In the same manner as Teams, all you need to do really at this point is download and install it using your preferred method and then just launch the application. Now, I personally like Microsoft Edge, uh, certainly since they made the decision to move to the Chromium engine. And one thing I've noticed in Linux at least, you don't get Microsoft nagging you all the time to change your default browser to, to Edge and also to your default PDF viewer, which is a nice little bonus. Now, in terms of performance, I found that Edge runs, yeah, runs well enough on, on Linux. All my extensions I use work the same as Windows. If I render websites, they're quick and easy to load up. And generally, just compatibility is very good. I think uh, when it comes to choosing between Google Chrome and Edge, it's really a case of just pick your poison. You know, are you going to go with Microsoft? Are you going to go with Google? But for your own sanity, for God's sake, do not use Bing as your search engine. It is absolutely shocking. However, aside from that, in terms of functionality, I would say that using Edge on Linux is pretty much the same as using it on Windows. Next up, we have Skype, which is officially available to install from Microsoft using either, once again, a Deb or RPM package. And that covers your installation for Ubuntu, Fedora, and OpenBase SUSE distributions. And unsurprisingly, again, for people that don't want to run those distributions, you've got Skype as a flat pack. As always, install it using your preferred method, and let's launch Skype and let's see what it looks like. Skype hasn't really changed in the several years that I used to use it. Uh, the layout's still the same. You can either use it to make VoIP calls using credit to external contacts, make your free calls to Skype users who are on your contact list, or even just to host quick meetings. I personally think with the mass adoption of Teams, then I can really see Skype getting retired over the next couple of years. But in the meantime, the functionality using St Skype on Linux is Basically identical to Windows, there's no real difference at this point. Plus my granny likes Skype, so I'm gonna stick with it. So the next two softwares we're gonna discuss are ones that don't actually have native applications on Linux, which is a bit of a shame. The first one is OneDrive, and OneDrive is Microsoft's file syncing client, and it's used for business use to synchronize between SharePoint sites and someone's desktop, and also for personal use for backing up files and folders to, to the cloud. Now, to my knowledge, there isn't actually a native Linux OneDrive application. However, there is a fantastic alternative called OneDriver. This allows your computer direct access to your files on Microsoft OneDrive. In other words, what it does, rather than syncing every file to your system, it provides a on-demand download of files whenever your computer attempts to use them. And of course, this works both ways. So if you create a new file on your system, it'll be uploaded to OneDrive. And then if you make some changes in the cloud, it'll also be reflected on your desktop. Now OneDriver can be installed on several distributions and there's, an, there's official installation instructions for if you're using Fedora, OpenSUSE, Ubuntu and Arch based distributions. Or if you really want to be a mad lad, you can install it from scratch. 
but no matter which way you decide to install the OneDriver, once it's installed, you want to launch it as normal. Now, I've already got it set up in my system, but I'm gonna just gonna show you how you do it from scratch. But let's remove that, that association. Click the big plus button here, and you wanna create a folder on your desktop that you want to synchronize OneDrive to. Uh, unsurprisingly, I've gone for the original option, which is OneDrive. Click select. And then I'm gonna sign in with my Microsoft accounts. Once that's done, what you'll find is your file browser will open up the location of the new folder, in this case, my OneDrive, and I'll just show you where that is. So if I go to home, it's OneDrive on the desktop here. And as I can see, I can now navigate through my storage that I've got saved on OneDrive. Now, for the most part, I found that OneDrive does its job. However, it is sometimes slow to load up a folder, and it's especially if it's got multiple files, such as like a folder that's full of photos or videos, and sometimes the thumbnails do take a while to go through as well. But aside from that, I'd say it's a good little project. Now, obviously, since OneDrive is not available on Linux, I don't think it's really fair at this point to make a comparison between using it natively on Windows and alternatively on, on Linux. However, OneDrive does fill the gap well, so at least there's that. Okay, so the final application or application suite, should, I should say, in this video that I'm going to cover is Microsoft Office. Now, unfortunately, much like OneDrive, there isn't a natively available version of Microsoft Office available on Linux which I personally think is one of the major roadblocks for higher Linux desktop adoption. That being said, to my knowledge, there is a official way or semi-official way of running Microsoft Office, aka the Microsoft 365 suite on Linux, and that is using a commercial product called Crossover. But luckily, you don't need to do any of that. There is an alternative. The alternative is just use Microsoft Office Online, and that has online versions of Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Outlook, and it only really leaves Access and Publisher missing, which are what you typically wouldn't use as a home user. You might use it as a business, but then again, if you're a business, you're probably not gonna be using Linux anyway, so it's kind of a moot point. So to access Microsoft Online, all you need to do is go to office.com, sign in using your Microsoft account, and then there you go. You now have access to the majority of Microsoft Office on Linux, although it is through a browser. And this is my preferred method of using Microsoft Office on Linux. However, something to just bear in mind, due to the partnership of Microsoft and Canonical, who are the developers of Ubuntu, I would say that it's only really a matter of time before we actually do see a native version of Microsoft Office. Although I suspect if that is going to be the case, I would not be surprised if it was actually put through as a snap package. Either way, with that, now you know how to install and use popular Microsoft software on Linux. So, in conclusion, Having Microsoft software available on Linux does break down the barriers of entry for most people, especially people that want to try Linux maybe for the first time, and hopefully it allows them to stay. So with that, I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please do feel free to leave a like, subscribe to the channel for more content like in the future, and if you've got any feedback, just let me know in the comments sections below. Thanks for watching again, and I'll see you again soon. Bye now!